It's been almost a year since I made the first Dead by Daylight Myths Busted video. In that time, we've looked at over 200 myths over the course of 22 videos. And today, I thought I would combine them all into one to make the whole series a little bit easier to watch with less ads and just generally a little bit more pleasant. There were some editing mistakes in some of the older videos. Uh, the audio wasn't particularly well balanced from episode to episode. So here is that. 204 Dead by Daylight Myths busted. Let's go. Solidarity is a Jane perk that restores 50% of your health when healing another survivor without a medkit. Autodidact instantly heals minus 25% to plus 35% depending on tokens when completing a skill check while healing another survivor without a medkit. But do these two work in conjunction with each other? When you gain or lose health, will that also affect Solidarity? Hex Devour Hope gains one token every time a player is unhooked more than 24 meters away from the killer. To self unhooking via incredible luck or deliverance, in this case, add a token. <laughs> this one was asked by Papa Swizz. The endurance status effect should prevent you from taking damage the next time that you're hit. Victor, however, usually ignores perks and status effects. For example, he doesn't run faster with play with your food, despite what uh, some YouTubers might tell you, and he still only rides healthy players when they're exposed. So if you're injured and have endurance, what happens when Victor pounces? Strider is a nurse perk that makes grunts of pain 50% louder and breathing 25% louder. Iron Will, however, reduces grunts of pain by 100% and No Mither reduces grunts of pain by 50%. So it stands to reason that with these two perks equipped, your grunts of pain are being reduced by 150%, totally nullifying Strider's grunts of pain effect. But does it? Power Struggle allows you to drop a pallet when being carried by the killer if your wiggle progression reaches 25%. But what happens when this is used against one of Freddy's dream pallets? <laughs> this one was sent in by Auric Lone Wolf. If you pallet stun a killer using Power Struggle and you have Smash Hit, Yanjin Lee's Exhaustion perk that allows you to sprint for 4 seconds after pallet stunning the killer, does Smash Hit proc. Oppression is a killer perk that causes three other generators to begin regressing when hitting a generator. Any survivors on the generators that begin regressing are faced with difficult skill checks. But, as brand new part skill checks count as great skill checks with fast track, the difficult skill checks via oppression or overcharge count as great skill checks the way that brand new parts do. That's a confusing sentence, isn't it? Whenever you're ready, hit that gen. Okay, it's just been smashed. Now what do you do? Ah, uh, it doesn't count, it doesn't count. <laughs> That's sad. That's really sad. It doesn't work. This one is technically the truth, but let me explain what's actually going on here because it's absolutely nothing to do with the fact that the resolution is stretched. You see, if you're playing at 1920 by 1080, then your GPU is rendering 2,073,600 pixels. If you're running at, say, 1600 by 1080, however, your GPU is rendering 1,728,000 pixels. There's more to it than this, of course. It'd be hugely inefficient to actually render 2 million moving parts every single frame, but the optimization at regular resolution is identical to that of a stretch resolution. The speed boost is purely from the reduced resolution, not from the stretch. If you really want to have the game run smoother, then it'd be fairer and less cringy to play at a resolution like 1280 by 720. Can you hook a survivor before they can use DS? This was suggested by Requas. The size of strike allows you to get off the killer's shoulders, stunning them for a few moments if they pick you up within 60 seconds of being unhooked. As a slow Slight delay to DS proccing as the survivor needs to complete a skill check. Can the killer hook the survivor before the skill check gets completed? Uh. 
but it is a fact that with stable ping and after the 4.5.0 UI updates, you cannot hook before DS. With an unstable ping, however, the skill check will trigger late and you may indeed succeed it after being hooked. Obviously, this isn't intentional gameplay design, however, so I'm sticking by my first conclusion. However, the perk Fire Up allows you to pick up survivors 4% faster for each generator that's been completed, so a maximum of 20% faster speed. Does this allow you to hook before a survivor can complete DS? <laughs> Built to Last works on picked up items, this is suggested by Wee Andy. Built to Last is a Felix perk that, once per trial and after 10 seconds, returns 50% of an item's charges. But what happens if another survivor depletes an item, drops it, and then you pick it up? Windows of Opportunity shows blocked windows. This is suggested by Suyami. Windows of Opportunity allows you to see the auras of breakable walls, windows, and pallets within 20 meters. And will it show the auras of windows blocked by the entity? Ah. Deliverance works with Second Wind. This was suggested by Sheriff Random. Deliverance guarantees you the ability to unhook yourself if you've gotten a safe unhook earlier in the trial. Second Wind automatically heals you after 20 seconds of being unhooked if you've healed another survivor earlier in the trial. But will Second Wind still heal you if you've unhooked yourself via Deliverance? Fixated affects urban evasion speed. It's suggested by Bishy4 Barra. Fixated is a Nancy perk that allows you to move 20% faster while walking. Urban evasion is a near perk that allows you to move at your walking speed while crouching. But does fixated mean that you crouch walk at 120% the base walking speed? Haunted Ground works of Undying, this is suggested by Axel Lion. Haunted Ground is a hex perk that causes all survivors to suffer from exposed when cleansed. Hex Undying will take the effect of any hex totem that is cleansed. So if Haunted Ground is cleansed, will Hex Undying take the effect, allowing two procs of Haunted Ground? Oppression circumvents anti-skill check toolbox add-ons as suggested by Jinx, hashtag Jinx, hash Jinx. Oppression causes any survivor working on a generator to be faced with a difficult skill check when another generator is kicked. The toolbox add-on instructions eliminate skill checks and repairing. So will instructions nullify the skill check effect of oppression? Stakeout works with Fast Track. This is suggested by Psycho Slim. Stakeout gives you a token for every 15 seconds you're in the killer's terror radius, and for each token, good skill checks are considered great skill checks. Fast Track gains three tokens every time another survivor is hooked, and when completing a great skill check, consumes all tokens and adds 1% bonus progression to the generator for each skill check. But to stake out great skill checks, cause Fast Track to proc. Enduring shortens the stun of power struggle. This is suggested by Tori. Enduring decreases the duration of pallet stuns by 50%. Power struggle allows you to drop a nearby pallet on a kilo and being carried in above 25% wiggle progression. But does enduring decrease the length of the stun when given by power struggle? The Hag's Terror Radius works with Starstruck. This was suggested by High Entropy Records. Mud Phantasms triggered by the Hag's Traps give off a Terror Radius. Starstruck, meanwhile, exposes all survivors within your Terror Radius while carrying a survivor. But do the Hag's Mud Phantasms cause you to get exposed via Starstruck? <laughs> What you hear after triggering a trap isn't a terror radius, but is actually chase music. The add-on Grandma's Heart, however, sets the hag's terror radius to zero meters and the trap's terror radius to 16 meters when that trap is triggered. So will this work with Starstruck?
haste effects, walking and crouching speeds. This was sent in by Fags. Fags. The haste status effect means that your movement speed is currently increased and can be applied through a variety of perks and even some item add-ons. But does it count towards walking and crouching speeds? You can see scratch marks from diversion when using fixated. This was sent in by Brian Canales. Canales? Ah, confusing names today. Diversion allows you to throw a pebble, creating an explosion from scratch marks where it lands. Fixated allows to see your own scratch marks. But do you see the scratch marks from diversion when using fixated? Autodidact causes Stakeout to lose a token. This was sent in by Sheriff Nancy. Autodidact changes skill checks to not have a great success zone when healing other survivors. It does this because its effect gains tokens and applies itself based on these skill checks. Stakeout, however, gains a token for every 15 seconds in the killer's terror radius and consumes a token when hitting a good skill check to convert that good into a great. But does Stakeout consume a token when Autodidact throws a skill check? <laughs> Fixated shows scratch marks closer together when the killer has Predator. This was sent in by Mihai Damien. Predator is a killer perk that causes scratch marks to spawn considerably closer together. But does Fixated show this difference compared to scratch marks without Predator? Monster Shrine can cause deliverance to not work. This is sent in by quite a few different people, actually. Monster Shrine causes self-unhook difficulty to be increased by 15% for a gamer hooked in the basement, whereas deliverance causes your self-unhook attempts to succeed 100% of the time. Will Monster Shrine prevent deliverance from working? No, no, it won't. I can't really show this in any meaningful way, but it, it won't. One way I thought of describing it is by saying that increasing 0% by 15%, that is the difficulty of escape, is still 0%, but that doesn't really stand up mathematically because 15% more than 96%, that is that the default difficulty of escape is over 100%, but it just trust me, it doesn't work like that. Uh, it, it doesn't work like that. Sorry, everyone. <sighs> the Blight's Thrown Syringe can injure survivors. A couple of people have suggested this, including a few Blight mains, and it seems like a bit of an oddity to me. Why would what amounts to a decal effect cause injury? I was going to totally dismiss it, but given the number of people that have asked, maybe there is some weight to it. So let's see, shall we? After a dash, the Blight hits himself with a dose of something, presumably Blighted Serum, and dismisses the syringe. <laughs> Today, we're going to be taking a look at some myths specifically for the PTB of the upcoming Resident Evil chapter or chapter 20. Let's dive in. Number one, bite the bullet, stop sounds on altruistic healing. This one was suggested by Skyborn. Bite the bullet causes you to stop making any sounds, including grunts of pain while healing. Does it work when healing another player? <laughs> Number two, head-on kills zombies. This was suggested by Carbon. Zombies go down when a survivor hits them with a pallet, but do they go down when the survivor uses head-on? Yes! Number three, hitting a zombie with mad grip pauses the wiggle timer. This was suggested once again by Skyborn. Usually when you hit a survivor when carrying another survivor using mad grip, the wiggle timer pauses. But does the timer also pause when hitting a zombie? Number four, flashbang and blast mine speed up as the generator speed increases. Flashbang and blast mine both trigger after repairing a certain percentage of a generator, but if you have two or more people working on a gen, does the progress rate for activating these perks increase in line with the speed increase of having those people on the gen? Wow, it didn't even proc that time. 
Number five, Rookie Spirit gains tokens from brand new parts skill checks. This was suggested by Airlight. Rookie Spirit allows you to see the auras of all regressing generators after completing three skill checks. But do brand new parts skill checks count towards activating this perk? Number six, what happens if you have Blast Mine and Repressed Alliance active? This was suggested by Saucy69. Nice. Blast Mine and Repressed Alliance both perform an action when a certain percentage of a generator is completed, and they both activate with the same button. So what happens if you have both equipped and ready to activate? Number seven, you can jump in a locker to hide from zombies. This is suggested by Sturm Katzi. If you're being chased by a zombie, what happens if you jump in a locker right in their face? And finally, number eight, Pepsi can make a video without it being outdated within a few days. <laughs> I mean, what's the new fastest totem cleansing speed? The previous fastest was 9.59 seconds, but Jill's new perk Counterforce can increase your totem cleanse speed by a whopping 100% if you've cleansed four other totems this trial. <sighs> You can trap the hatch. Can you place a trap on top of the hatch, preventing it from being used by a survivor without them getting caught? Deception procs Red Herring. Deception fakes fast jumping into a locker. Red Herring's effect triggers when fast jumping into a locker. So does using Deception and faking it cause Red Herring to trigger? Lightborn counters Flashbang. The Flashbang dropped by, uh, Flashbang causes blindness. Lightborn, meanwhile, counters the blindness caused by flashlights. But does it stop Flashbangs from having an impact? Soul Guard can be used to uncover hex perks. Soul Guard allows you to pick yourself up off the ground when cursed. But can this be done before a curse is revealed, thus revealing the killer's hex perks? Failing a skill check with Technician still wakes you up from Dream World. You can wake yourself up from Freddy's Dream World by failing a skill check. Uh, on purpose, of, of course. Always, always on purpose. Technician prevents failed skill checks from causing an explosion, but does it still wake you up from Dream World? A failed Bite the Bullet skill check wakes you up from Dream World. Similarly to Technician, Bite the Bullet causes noise notifications to not trigger when failing a healing skill check. But do they still cause you to wake up from Dream World? Resurgence and Deliverance still heals you for 50%. Resurgence fully heals you to 50% when being unhooked or unhooking yourself. Deliverance gives you a 100% chance of unhooking yourself, but causes you to be broken, i.e. unable to heal, for 60 seconds. So, after those 60 seconds have passed, will Resurgence mean that you still get healed at 50% when unhooking? Down me! Whoa! Prove thyself might stack? 
This was submitted by Jiri Bob. Prove Thyself gives you a 15% speed boost to generator repairs for each survivor within 4 meters of you, up to a maximum of 45%. This effect is applied to every other survivor too. It does not stack, so if two survivors both have it, then you'll still only get a max of 45% speed increase. However, perks that are the same and don't stack, but that are at different tiers, display separately on the UI. Jiri sent in this video that shows them and a friend working on a generator together, and two sets of the Prove Thyself icon are visible. They start the generator at roughly the 4 second mark and finish the generator at roughly the 35 second mark, meaning that this gen took 31 seconds, which is a speed of 2.58 charges per second. Now, usually with 3 people on a gen, you repair at 0.7 charges per second due to the 15% charge per second decrease per person working on a gen, and with the 3 people as there are on this gen, that'd account for a 30% boost via Prove Thyself at tier 3, resulting in 0.91 charges per second per person. Multiply that by 3 for the 3 survivors affected, and you have 2.73 charges per second. This means that they repaired the generator slower than Prove Thyself at Tier 3. This discrepancy is because the third survivor didn't run in for a few seconds after the gen had started being repaired. One thing to look out for is the progress bar. Prove Thyself effectively eliminates the speed debuff of having multiple survivors working on a generator at the same time. The reason why it's red is because you personally are repairing the generator slower than one charge per second. If Prove Thyself was stacking here, then the bar would have turned gold. Spreglin's demise works to make survivors drop the lament configuration. The lament configuration is a physical item that survivors hold. Spreglin's demise causes any player you hit with an M1 to drop the item they're currently holding. I've seen items related to abilities be added in before, and they've worked with Franklin's, but the box isn't something you're supposed to be able to let down. So what happens when Franklin's hits it? Fixated makes you walk faster when chained. Fixated gives you a 20% increase to walking speed. When chained, you can only walk. But does this mean that you'll still get that 20% speed boost? <laughs> Pinhead can teleport outside of the map. When using his teleportation ability, Pinhead spawns behind survivors. So what happens if they're facing their back towards a wall at the edge of the map? And how about instead, if they're facing the back towards the exit gate? After all, you can send your gateway outside of the exit gates. Action speed bonuses apply to lament configuration. Perks such as fine chill or resilience offer action speed bonuses to a set list of actions. It might make sense for these bonuses to also apply to solve the lament configuration. Chains cause you to fall slower. Cedarbyte's chains greatly stagger your movement speed. And what happens if you fall out of a window while they're attached? You can pallet stun Pinhead while he's using his power. What happens if you pallet stun Pinhead? Well, I don't really need to describe this one, do I? Why are we in this same question again? You can blind the portal. Can you blind the portal? Again, it's the same. It's just the, the question. Okay, but can you blind Pinhead while he's controlling his portal? What happens then, huh? Didn't think of that one, did you? Play with your food doesn't lose stacks when injuring survivors of Engineer's Fang. Play with your food gains a token each time you lower your obsession to escape a chase and gives you a 5% haste boost for each token it gains. It loses a token when performing a basic attack or a special attack that damages a survivor. Engineer's Fang causes Pinhead's chains to injure survivors. But as this is a modification of the ability, does it still cause play with your food to lose a stack?
Alert activates with special attack palette break. This one was submitted by Luke 0580 Alert reveals the aura of the killer to you for five seconds when they break a palette. But does this apply when a killer's ability breaks a palette? Power Struggle counts as a killer grasp rescue stack. This one was submitted by Scrap Trap. Power Struggle allows to drop a nearby pallet on a killer when being carried and above 25% wiggle progression. But does this count in game as a killer grasp rescue attack for perks and challenges like We're Gonna Live Forever that gain a token when rescuing a carried survivor via a stun? <laughs> Power Struggle works with Nemesis. This one was submitted by Matrix Shaman. Nemesis switches the obsession to a survivor that pallet stuns you, but the Power Struggle stuns cause Nemesis to switch obsession. <laughs> Blast Mine uncloaks Wraith. This one was submitted by Evan Bryce. Blast Mine can be attached to a generator and when kicked by the killer causes an explosion which both stuns and blinds them. Usually shining a flashlight on the Wraith while cloaked causes them to get light burned and uncloak. But does Blast Mine cause this to occur? Lightborn prevents light burns. Another Wraith myth. This one was submitted by Kos Tokrev. Lightborn stops you from being afflicted by the effects of flashlight blinds, but does it stop the Wraith from getting light burned? Freddy's teleportation can be stopped with Repressed Alliance. This was submitted by Crawl to the Field. Repressed Alliance allows you to block a generator, which prevents it from being affected by perks such as Ruin or Pop. But will using this when Freddy begins to teleport to a generator cause that teleport to cancel? Fixated increases crawling speed. This was submitted by Wicked. Fixated causes you to walk 20% faster. Wicked suggests that it's currently bugged and also allows you to crawl faster too. Let's take a look. Mad Grit resets the timer on each hit. This one was submitted by the one and only Benjo. Mad Grit causes the wiggle bar to pause for four seconds when successfully hitting a survivor while carrying a survivor. But what does hitting two survivors in quick succession do? Does the timer restart? You can view victims of Pinhead's Mori on floors below. This one was submitted by Matzriel. Pinhead's Mori has him capturing a survivor in chains and sending them through a portal downwards. But what happens when Pinhead does this on the second floor of a map like Midwich? Can you watch the victim phase through the floor from below? All right, listen, I had a bit of a problem recording this one. For some reason, I can't record directly from my Xbox while I'm doing remote play. So uh, this is gonna have to do. I'm sorry, let's get some audio, shall we? That wasn't useful. <laughs> A blind Myers can gain stalk progress. This was submitted by Toxin. I think I need to explain this one. Can Myers stalk you while he's blind? You can blind Victor. This was submitted by Yukon. We actually discussed this on stream yesterday as well. We established in the last video that you can blind Pinhead while a portal is active. But what happens when you do this to Victor? Bonus! What happens if you blind Charlotte while she's controlling Victor? Using any means necessary on an infected pallet makes you sick. This was submitted by I'm a joke. Any means necessary allows you to pick up drop pallets. But if this pallet is infected by plague, will you end up infected? Enduring cuts stun time when cloaked as Wraith. This is submitted by Eisel4149. Enduring reduces the duration of pallet stuns by 50%. If you're cloaked as Wraith and are stunned, however, you pause for an additional amount of time as this counts as a burn. Does enduring make a difference on this time?
Insidious works with the Legion's iridescent button add-on. This one was submitted by Sparks Over. Insidious grants undetectable after standing still for two seconds, which will disable your terror radius. Iridescent button, on the other hand, spreads your terror radius map wide when in feral frenzy. But does Insidious still block your terror radius when used of iridescent button? Okay, so I chose this one because it will answer precisely how this add-on implements its effect. Does it, for example, modify the player's terror radius or does it create a new terror radius? If Insidious doesn't work and the terror radius can still be heard, then the latter is true. It's not really about the effect or outcome, but illuminating how the developers went about implementing this effect. As a game developer myself, I find this sort of thing really interesting. Uh, I hope that answers why I sometimes pick things that appear obvious. It's not about the game, it's about its development. All right, so just for the record, switch, no terror radius. And Insidious is on. Insidious can activate when holding a survivor. This one was submitted by IC Gaming Rules. We've already gone through Insidious's effect. The question is, if you're carrying a survivor and that survivor doesn't wiggle, will undetectable still be applied? Alert activates when the killer gets blast mined. This one was submitted by Heatwave. Blast mine allows to set a trap on a generator that explodes when the killer goes to kick it. But as this isn't a completed breaking action, will the killer still be revealed by alert? Any means necessary can cancel out blood favor. This one was submitted by P Pimentina. Pimentina? Pimentinia, please tell me if that's right or not. Hex blood favor causes all pallets within a 32 meter radius to be blocked by the entity for 15 seconds. Any means necessary allows you to lift up pallets. So what happens if you try and lift up a dropped pallet that is entity blocked? Did drop pallets even get entity blocked? Huh. Vigil speeds up second way. I, I, I mean, renewals heal time. This one was submitted by Ben underscore. Renewal <laughs> applies the broken status effect. After 20 seconds, you lose broken and are healed for one health state. Vigil, on the other hand, increases the speed of the broken effect by 30%. But does this also speed up the time it takes to get healed from renewal? I'm not calling it that. It's second win. Victor ignores Lightborn and can still be blinded. This one was submitted by Zach White. In the last episode, we established that Victor can be blinded with a flashlight. Usually, perks don't apply to Victor. You can't increase his speed with play with your food, for example. Fuck off, Java. But does Lightborn then prevent him from getting blinded? Using power struggle on an infected pallet will make you infected. This one was submitted by Mikhail. M Mika, Mikhail. I. It's a good thing my job doesn't involve reading out complicated names very often. Power struggle allows to drop a nearby pallet on the killer when being carried in above 25% wiggle progression. But will doing this cause you to become infected from the plague's infection on an infected pl pallet planet? <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say. Power Struggle works with a blood favor blocked pallet. This one was submitted by J Wags for the win. Power Struggle allows to drop a pallet on the killer while being carried after reaching 25% wiggle progression. Hex Blood Favor blocks pallets within a 30 meter radius when a survivor is damaged with a basic or special attack. But will this entity block prevent Power Struggle from being usable? Blessing time will increase mid blessing if a doll totem turns into a hex. This one was submitted by Soul Tiger 2100. It usually takes 14 seconds to bless a doll totem and 24 seconds to bless an active hex totem. But what will happen if your mid blessing when the doll totem you're blessing turns into a hex totem? Will the time increase?
Zombies react to pebbles. This one was submitted by uh, this guy. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Diversion allows you to throw a pebble, which creates an explosion at the place it lands and scratch marks. This would obviously confuse a human player, but will it confuse the AI controlled zombies? Smash hit activates when you stun Victor. This one comes from JRM. Well, well I, I say I say that. The, the way he worded it was, does smash hit activate when you stun Victor? Or smash his head? Not, not really a stun because he, he kind of dies, but y y you know, you know what I mean. Smash hit allows you to run super fast when stunning the killer with a pallet. But will it work with Victor as he is technically not a killer, but an extension of Charlotte's power? Let's find out. <laughs> Survivor Gestures Block, Tombstone. This one was submitted by Crawl the Field. The Myers add-ons Judith's Tombstone and Tombstone Peace both allow you to immediately kill injured or healthy survivors when in tier three. I've seen some speculation about this, so although this might sound a bit ridiculous, I still want to test it. Does waving or pointing prevent this interaction from happening when M1ing? Shadow Step hides fixated visible scratch marks. This one was submitted by Peter. Boon Shadow Step hides scratch marks within its radius. Fixated allows you to see your own scratch marks. But will you see your own scratch marks when in the radius of Shadow Step or will they be covered up from the perk's effect? You can see Victor with Kindred. This one was submitted by Mythbusters regular. It's Jay Turnbull 2110. Kindred allows you to see the auras of all survivors and the killer if the killer is within 16 meters of the hook. But will you be able to see Victor if he's within range? You can stun Victor and Charlotte at the same time with one pallet. This one was submitted by X-Man. I don't really need to explain this one, do I? If both Victor and Charlotte stand in the correct position by a pallet, can you stun both of them at once? Blindness prevents you from seeing windows and pallets when using windows of opportunity. This one was submitted by Simple Kin. The blindness status effect blocks survivors' ability to see auras. Windows of opportunity allows you to see the auras of windows and pallets. So what happens if you're blinded with windows of opportunity? Does the perk trump the blindness effect? The order of perks for Soul Guard and Unbreakable Matter. This one was submitted by Rudolf Zaitmanis. Uh, Zaitmanis? I'm probably... I'm sorry. There's no... I can Soul Guard allows you to pick yourself up from dying if a curse is active. Unbreakable allows you to pick yourself up from dying, but only once. So what happens if you pick Unbreakable before Soul Guard? Will Unbreakable be used up? We can test this by picking ourselves up once while a hex is active, and then again when the hex isn't active. If Unbreakable is used up when it's in the first slot, then we won't be able to pick ourselves themselves up after the hex is cleansed. Anxious Grasp can be used to make survivors in lockers scream. This one was submitted by Bastacool77. Anxious Grasp- It's pronounced Anxious Gasp, but not Anxious Grasp. What are you doing, Tom? Read the title of the add-on. If you don't, the commenters are going to do it for you, and that's going to be frustrating. So go upstairs and re-record the audio, or do this, which might be funnier. Hmm. Anxious Gasp is a nurse add-on that causes survivors to scream when blinking past them. As you can see survivors in lockers when blinking through them as nurse, can you cause the survivor to scream when blinking through them with this add-on? <laughs> you 
you can't stun killers during reload animations. This one was submitted by Nihama and it doesn't really require any explanation. Let's take a look. Flashlight blind duration add-ons increase zombie blindness. This one was submitted by Arc Rager DVD. You can blind Nemesis' zombies to stop them in their tracks. But what happens when using a blind duration increasing add-on with a flashlight? Will it increase the duration that they stay stunned for? Taking two Scourge Hook perks increases the number of available Scourge Hooks. This one was submitted by the Shaken Condor. When taking multiple Boon Totem perks, whichever totem you bless applies the effects of all those perks to the one actively blessed totem. So, for the new killer perk type of Scourge Hooks, which by default turn four regular hooks into Scourge Hooks, are the effects also applied onto each Scourge Hook, or does it turn a further four regular hooks into Scourge Hooks? Wow, that was a, that was a terrible explanation, but you get what I mean, right? If four Scourge Hooks spawn, then it's safe to say that the effect of multiple Scourge Hook perks are applied to those four hooks rather than four separate hooks. Myers holds his hands open when in tombstone mode. This one was submitted by Andrew Thomas. This has been a subject of quite a lot of discussion, and I'm fairly certain he does, but I'm yet to personally see a side-by-side -side comparison, so here is a side-by-side -side comparison. Hello, it's me again, low-quality webcam. Um, I'm fairly certain that he does hold his hand open or something along those lines. It at least looks different. These images I took yesterday on Switch of him standing still show no difference. So, I think it's only when he's moving. And this post from Ghost3067 on Reddit has another side-by-side -side comparison that clearly shows a difference. So, you've learned something today. There is no difference when he's standing still, but there is when he's moving. So... There you go. Hex Blood Favor blocks Dream Palace. This one was submitted by Lumrumbi Lumrumbi. Hex Blood Favor entity blocks all palettes within 30 meters of a survivor that goes from healthy to injured. But will this affect Dream Palettes placed by Freddy? If it doesn't, then that's a surefire way of knowing what is and isn't a Dream Palette. So this is actually kind of a juicy one. Flashbangs disable hag traps. This one was submitted by Kane is cool one. The hag's traps can be destroyed by shining a flashlight on them, but will the same thing happen when dropping a flashbang near them? And finally, two-person gens will be faster than three-person gens if a third person stands nearby with prove thyself but doesn't work on the generator. This one was submitted by Vlad Spellbinder. I'm not sure why I pronounced that Vlad Spellbinder rather than Vlad Spellbinder. Sorry, Vlad. Also, I know this wasn't quite what you were asking, but this is the way I interpreted it because I wasn't really 100% sure what you were asking. Sorry. <laughs> Prove Thyself offers a 15% generator speed repair boost for each survivor within 4 meters of your location. It applies its effect to all other survivors within 4 meters, but doesn't stack. This ability is really about counteracting the fact that you repair 15% slower for each survivor working on a generator with you. So what will happen when two survivors work on a generator with the third nearby, but not repairing? You should gain the extra 15% speed boost without taking a penalty. The question is, will this be faster than having all three survivors work on the gen? You won't be injured if hit when healthy with the endurance status effect. This one was submitted by Joelbrook182. Oh, and Pickleboy as well. I think a few other people also suggested this one. It's a good one. The endurance status effect allows you to resist the next hit, putting you in a deep wound state and forcing you to mend. Usually, you have the status effect when injured, but what would happen if you had this effect when healthy? Pebble doesn't actually have a pebble. This one was submitted by Oi Real. Oi! Real!
real. This is a great one. Diversion allows you to throw a pebble that creates a noise notification and scratch marks at the place where it lands. The description for Diversion states that you are throwing a physical pebble. But is this actually the case or is there just a white line showing the trajectory of the would-be pebble? We can only really test this by getting as close as possible to the pebble. Okay, I've said pebble too many times. And then again, for God's sake, probably easiest if it's the place where it will land and then slowing down the footage. You can make Myers close his hand when using Tombstone. This one was submitted by QWERTY. QWERTY? Qu QWERBY. Why have I written Qu QWERTY? Sorry, dude. As established in previous videos when using Judith's Tombstone, your movement speed is decreased by 9% when in Tier 3, making it so your hand is left slightly open as the animation position is based on velocity. But what if you take Play With Your Food to increase your movement speed by 15%? Will the hand fully close, making your use of this incredibly broken add-on undisguised? I hadn't written any word at the end there, so I just added that one on. Using a flashlight during the endgame collapse allows you to glitch the camera. This one was submitted by Channel Manager Chipstar878. When using the flashlight, the camera angle and input changes, but will this effect carry over or be cancelled when the endgame collapse penetrates a survivor? Here's wording, not mine. Instructions counters overcharge. Yeah. Instructions counter overcharge and oppression. This one was submitted by Gilberto Hernandez. The instructions toolbox add-on eliminates skill checks while repairing a generator. But what happens if you're using a toolbox with instructions when a killer procs oppression, or when you start it on a generator that's been hit with overcharge? Porter works with vaccine crates. This one was submitted by iHibera. I've definitely not pronounced that right. Sorry, dude. Porter triggers a loud noise notification whenever a survivor unlocks a chest or picks up any item within 64 meters of you. This tooltip tells us that it works with limited items. So that includes picking up vaccines. But does the chest effect work with Nemesis's vaccine chests being opened? Nemesis's. But does the chest effect work with Nemesis's vaccine chests being opened? I think it's just Nemesis vaccine chest. I don't know. Someone in the comments, let me know what the correct way of pronouncing that is, please. Thank you. Inner Strength will heal you if you're in Deep Wound, which was submitted by Gavin Leisure. When in Deep Wound, you have to mend before the timer runs out or you'll be put into the dying state. Inner Strength allows you to heal one health state when hiding inside a locker for eight seconds after cleansing a totem. But will Inner Strength cure the Deep Wound status or will you still go down if you don't mend in time? Small game can gain more than five stacks when cleansing rekindled totems. This one was submitted by Logan Lathrop. Hex Pentimento allows the killer to rekindle cleansed totems. In a previous video, we found out that Counterforce can gain more than its previous maximum of five stacks by cleansing these totems. Small game it triggers an auditory warning when looking in the direction of totems within a 45 degree cone. This is decreased by five degrees for each totem that is cleansed by any player. It has a stated maximum reduction of 20 degrees, but will this hold true when cleansing Pentimento totems? Can it gain more than five totems? Totems? Tokens? <laughs> Small game loses a stack when Hex Pentimento reignites a totem. This one was submitted by Rose Draws. Given the result of our previous myth, does small game lose a stack when a totem is rekindled? It would make sense.
you will still lose distortion tokens when within the radius of a boon at Shadow Step Totem. This one was submitted by Cav. I was a bit confused at first, actually, because Cav, mate, you said deception, not distortion, but because I'm a big brained genius, I knew what you actually meant. Distortion starts with three tokens. Each time your aura would be revealed to the killer, you lose a token and you leave no scratch marks for 10 seconds. Boon at Shadow Step, on the other hand, hides your scratch marks and aura from the killer when within its range. So what happens when your aura would be revealed to the killer when within the radius of Shadow Step? Will you still lose one of your three precious distortion tokens. You can't get crows while in a snowman. This one was submitted by Jane Fennel. Uh, I know this event has just ended. Weird that it ended before Christmas, but whatever. Attentive viewers will have noted that I asked for myths related to the snowman. I intended on doing a whole video dedicated to these and releasing it on Christmas Day. Then I realized the event ends before Christmas Day and that snowmen don't spawn in customs, making the entire premise of the video largely unfeasible as it would take tens of hours to record footage. That video isn't happening. Sorry. However, I can answer this one with the following footage. You can bring a doll totem back if it's destroyed, rekindled, blessed, and then snuffed out. This one was submitted by Canadian Dutch. I don't need to explain this one beyond the title. Let's take a look. Getting injured by a huntress with exhaustion hatchets will not proc overcome. This one was submitted by Kane is Cool One. The huntress add on Venomous Concoction causes survivors hit by a hatchet to suffer from exhaustion for five seconds. Overcome, meanwhile, allows you to sprint for an additional two seconds on top of the usual three seconds when injured. It cannot be used when exhausted. So, what happens when hit with a Venomous Concoction hatchet while Overcome is equipped? Will you only get the three seconds of sprint time? Overcome will trigger with a nemesis contamination hit. This one was submitted by Larry in a basement playing games. The best place to be when playing games, Larry, no doubt. Overcome triggers only when your health state changes on paper, but it'd be safe to assume that the speed boost you get when hit with a contamination tentacle from nemesis or the zombies is the same code. It would be an easy oversight then for overcome to trigger in the same function and thus be triggered alongside the nemesis tentacle hit rather than overcome being its own code called only when the health state is changed, overriding the usual function. Either way, on Answering this one will provide clarity on exactly how both of these mechanics are implemented. Spirit will prevent crows from flying off when disarming traps. This one was submitted by Kostia Kovalchuk. Normally, the various crows dotted around the map will fly away if you run near them or disable a trap near them, potentially giving away your position to the killer. Calm Spirit is a perk that lowers the odds of alerting nearby crows by 100%. So what would happen if you, with Calm Spirit, disarmed a trap nearby a crow? Will they still not be alerted? Using fast track tokens will increase the progression of Flashbang. This one was submitted by Miguel Palacio Ibanez. Sorry, I'm pronouncing that wrong. For each survivor that is hooked other than you, fast track gains three tokens. When completing a great skill check on a generator, all tokens are consumed, offering a 1% progression bonus on that generator for each token consumed. Flashbang, meanwhile, activates after repairing generators for a total of 50% of their maximum progression. But will the bonus progression offered by fast track also fill up the Flashbang bar? Metal of Man will tank hits over Styptic Agent. This one was submitted by second time contributor Larry in a basement playing games. Nice one, Larry. Metal of Man is a perk that, after taking three protection hits, will give you the endurance status effect, which will block any damage taken that would put you from injured to dying. Styptic Agent, meanwhile, is a medkit add-on that, when used, also grants the endurance status effect. So what happens if you get to three Metal of Man stacks, apply Styptic Agent, and are then hit while injured? Will Metal of Man tank the hit? Uh... <laughs> 
Overcome works if you're hit when Burrow Time is active. This one was submitted by Blue. Burrow Time applies the endurance status effect to any survivor that you save off the hook. Overcome is an exhaustion perk that allows you to sprint for an additional two seconds when hit, but will overcome still proc when you're hit with endurance. Blast Mine removes Hag's traps. This one was submitted by the legend that is Dead by Erica. We've previously established that Flashbang removes Hag's traps. But given that Blast Mine essentially creates the same effect as Flashbang, but concentrated on a generator, does it also remove the Hag's traps if they're nearby? Overcome triggers when changing health state rather than when being hit. This one was submitted by Nunny. Overcome continues to be a perplexing perk in terms of how precisely it's written in code to function. Given what we know so far, it might make sense for it to proc when switching health state, but not via the killer, such as through for the people. Let's take a look. Generator blockage time stacks with other generator blockage perks. This one was submitted by the sentient embodiment of the blight perk Dragon's Grip. Deadlock causes the generator with the most progression to be blocked by the entity for 30 seconds when another generator is completed. But what would happen if you hit Repressed Alliance, which also blocks a generator for 30 seconds but is applied by a survivor, and then have Deadlock apply its effect to the same generator? Does the blockage time stack or will it remain 30 seconds? Or will Deadlock be ignored and Repressed Alliance prevent the Deadlock time from starting? And finally, you can get broken while healthy. This one was submitted by Gent. Broken status effect prevents you from being able to heal. Forced penance causes you to be broken for 80 seconds when taking a protection hit. The Death Slinger's ability doesn't injure you until the chain breaks or the Death Slinger hits M1, but does count as a protection hit if you take the hit in place of an injured survivor. So in those brief seconds before the chain breaks or you're hit by a basic attack, you should, in theory, be able to be both broken and healthy. Let's take a look. Corrective action and stakeout is a canonical ship. This one was submitted by Dardade and is maybe the best submission we've ever had ever. Strong start. Stakeout gains a token every 15 seconds you're standing within the killer's terror radius without being chased to a maximum of four tokens. When completing a good skill check, a token is consumed and the good skill check is considered a great skill check instead. Corrective action, meanwhile, starts with three tokens and gains a token each time you succeed at a great skill check to a maximum of five tokens. Each time a survivor other than you fails a skill check, a token is consumed and that failed skill check is considered a good skill check. So the question is this. If Survivor 1 has corrective action and Survivor 2 has stakeout with at least one token, both are working on the same generator and Survivor 2 fails a skill check, is that skill check considered a great skill check? The idea being that corrective action transforms it into a good and then stakeout transforms it again into a great. Let's take a look. Uh. Corrective action loses stacks if someone on the same generator as you with technician fails a skill check. This one was submitted by Broiler Chicken. Another corrective action one. Nice. Technician is a perk that, when failing a skill check, prevents the generator explosion, applies the default regression penalty, and then applies an additional penalty of 3%. As we've already established, corrective action loses a stack when another player fails a skill check. But will this still happen when that player with technician fails a skill check? The plague will have her vile purge cancelled if active when all fountains are used up. This one was submitted by Zorin, Zorin, Zorin. The plague receives corrupt purge automatically if all fountains are used up. What happens if this happens while she's mid vile purge? Will her vile purge be cancelled mid vomit stream?
Flashbang and Blast Mine destroy the artist's crows. This one was submitted by Kiyuru. In previous videos, we established that both Flashbang and Blast Mine take out the hag's traps in the same way that flashlights do. But will it take out the artist's crows too? Decorative entities sync across clients. This one was submitted by... Oh, me. It was me. I, I came up with this one. Nice. Some maps have decorative entities like rats that scurry away from you when you draw near. They can sometimes be distracting, especially against killers like the Trapper, where you're constantly scanning the ground, and can also indicate whether or not there is a survivor or killer just ahead of you. Or can they? No. No, they can't. As this image demonstrates, they do not sync across clients and are contained entirely within your instance of the game. Good to know. Remember me gains a stack when the obsession uses for the people. This one was submitted by Magic Prunes. Remember me gains a stack each time the obsession loses a health state. For the people allows you to essentially trade a health state with another survivor. But will remember me gain a stack if the obsession uses for the people? Deadlock switches to another gen if the gen it would have been applied to is already entity blocked. This one was submitted by Kinetic152 and a fair few others, actually, but I saw their comment first. Sorry. Deadlock causes the generator with the most progress to be blocked off by the entity when another generator is completed. In the last video, we established that if repressed alliance is used on this generator before the effect of deadlock would be applied, nothing happens. But we didn't check whether deadlock had instead put itself on another gen. So let's look once again and figure out if another gen is blocked instead. Medal of Man blocks the Deep Wound Timer's downing. This one was submitted by Hex Your Mum. Medal of Man applies endurance after taking three protection hits. If you're in Deep Wound, however, when the timer runs out without mending, will the endurance effect prevent you from getting downed? Overcome activates from Plague's Sickness. This one was submitted by... Uh, this fella. Overcome activates when it hits. But does the Plague's Infection, which will build up to an injury over time, cause it to trigger? Hex Blood Favor activates from Plague's Sickness. This one was submitted by George Marshall. Hex Blood Favor activates whenever a survivor loses a health state by any means and blocks all pallets within 32 meters of that survivor's location for 15 seconds. But will it activate when going from healthy to injured via the Plague's Sickness? And finally, Hex Blood Favor activates from For the People. This one was submitted by Matthew Martinez. So given what we know from the previous myth, does Blood Favor also activate when For the People causes a survivor to go down a health state? You can bleed out in a trapper's bear trap. This one was submitted by Relancis. Speaks for itself, doesn't it? Uh, I'm sure this is a thing that can happen, but I've never seen it happen before. So let's take a look. <laughs> but what if you had an active deep wound timer? Will you bleed out and go from trap to down because of the deep wound?
Level 3 Insanity helps to charge Diversion. This one was submitted by Moises Vera. The Doctor's ability puts you into tears of insanity. His add-ons, Calm Class 1, Calm Class 2, and Calm Carter's Notes, have you here a constant illusionary distant terror radius when in Madness Tier 3. Diversion, meanwhile, gains a charge when standing within the killer's terror radius, but will it charge when within the illusionary terror radius? Blood favor activate activates. <laughs> Blood favor activate. I can't say. Blood favor activates on deep whoop. Deep whoop. Why am I struggling? Look, right. It's it's twenty to nine in the morning. I'm recording this. Blood favor activates on deep wound downing. This one was suggest suggested. Ah, this one was suggested by Plague Boy Man Guy Dude Person. <laughs> when inflicted with a deep wound, you must mend before the timer runs out, or you're downed. Hex Blood Favor, meanwhile, blocks all pallets within 32 meters of a survivor who goes down a health state. But will it still trigger from a deep wound downing? <laughs> Blood Favor activates when using a Mori. This one was suggested by Drift. All right, so how about Amori? As that technically isn't a health state change, unless dying to dead counts. Blood favor activates when stepping in the trapper's trap. This one was suggested by Helsus. I think we ought to make this the last Hex blood favor activating myth. We've got enough evidence now that any health state reduction will cause it to proc. But as one last hurrah, let's find out if it activates when getting trapped. Huh. No move that triggers blood favor at the start of the game. Okay, what? one more. Last one. This was suggested by Kanishk Singh. No mither causes you to be both injured and broken for the entire trial. But does it trigger blood favor as you spawn in? If no mither activates in the same frame that the survivors load into the game world, then this would make sense. Let's find out. Overcome activates when escaping a bear trap. This one was suggested by sodium chloride. Overcome activates whenever you become injured, as stepping in a bear trap is similar to going from healthy to down to injured, or potentially in code is a health state in itself that switches you to injured when you break free, will overcome activate after escaping. This is similar to um, the way that adrenaline used to trigger when you got off the hook, if you were hooked when the exit gates got powered. So that's why, that's why I've chosen this one, because I think it might work. First track will activate from a stakeout skill check. This one was submitted by Michael Valleys. Or Vels. Vales, or whatever. I'm sorry, Michael. First track gains three tokens each time a survivor other than you is hooked. On completing a great skill check, all tokens are consumed and a 1% progression bonus is applied for each token gobbled up. <laughs> I wrote that down. I thought that would sound right. It doesn't sound right. Look, I've explained the effect of fast track about a hundred times in the last year in videos. So I'm just trying to figure out ways to make it fun for myself. Snake out! Gains a token. Every 15 seconds, you're within the killer's terror radius without being chased. When completing a good skill check, a token is consumed, and that good skill check is considered instead a great skill check. But will Stakeout's transformation of that good trigger Fast Strike's token consumption?
Fast track tokens are consumed when you hit a brand new part skill check. This one was submitted by Handy Tard Phase. Previously, when investigating the depths of fast track's potential, I found that when succeeding at a brand new skill check, all fast track tokens were consumed with no additional progress being applied. This comment from Christopher Provenzano, however, suggests that this is no longer the case. And so I figured it was worth investigating once again. Enduring reduces the stun effect from Blast Mine. This one was submitted by Ash. Enduring reduces pallet stun duration by 50%. That is, that's such a simple perk ability compared to what we're used to now. It looks strange seeing the tooltip only being one line of text. Damn. Blast Mine, meanwhile, allows the survivor to set a trap on a generator that, when kicked, explodes, blinding the killer and stunning them. But will Enduring reduce the usual stun time? Ah. Pebble can go through walls. This one was submitted by Pro Meth Goblin. Oh, I'm gonna have to blur that profile picture, aren't I? Diversion allows you to throw a pebble. But can this pebble go through walls or does it collide with the first solid surface it comes across? At the end of that sentence sounds like a reference to the profile picture that I have to blur. <laughs> uh, just to give you a little hint of what that is. The red stain is the killer's field of view. This one was submitted by Tox. Another really interesting one here. Uh, the red stain is designed to show what the killer can see, or at least where they're currently looking. But does it actually represent the killer's field of view? Let's find out. This survivor is standing just out of the red stain. You can't use Repressed Alliance on a generator with another survivor's blast mine. This one was submitted by Ward is Bored 514. I think that the theory here is that a generator can only have one status effect, if that makes sense. I'd love to see some sort of output of what the attributes of a generator look like. It might be that status effect is a string, which would mean that it can only contain one effect. Or is entity blocked and is trapped might be two entirely separate variables. Let's find out if you can have the generator both trapped and blocked by survivors. The. 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 You can kill the artist's crows with head on. This one was submitted by Fatty. If you walk into the artist's crows, you become swarmed. But what happens when hitting against them with head on? Will they get destroyed and not apply swarm? Just a few pointed out that I could have used Lightborn when testing whether or not Enduring reduced Blast Mine's stun duration. So let's take another look. Just in case you missed last week's episode, Blast Mine allows a survivor to trap a generator, causing it to explode, stunning and blinding the killer when it's kicked. Enduring reduces the duration of pallet stuns by 50%, and Lightborn makes you immune to blindness. So, does Enduring reduce the stun duration of Blast Mine? Let's take a look. You can't see skill checks when blinded. This one was submitted by Amy Like Seals. You can blind yourself with flashbangs as a survivor, but will this stop your ability to be able to see skill checks? We can force a skill check by using a brand new part to test this out. Let's take a look. This is not happening increases the skill check zone of wiggling. This one was submitted by No Tray. As of 5.5.0, you can now switch on wiggling via skill checks in the betas tab. But will This Is Not Happening, which increases the success zone of great skill checks by 30% when injured, alter the great success zone of these wiggling skill checks? Balance landing procs with the boil over height change. This one was submitted by Marcus Logan. In the latest patch, boil over has been buffed to cause your wiggle meter to increase by 25% when the killer drops from a great height. 
But if you take a balanced landing, which allows you to sprint for three seconds when falling from a great height, will balance proc when being dropped because the wiggle meter was pushed over 100% by the fall. Let's take a look. The wind on Ormond tells you which direction the killer is walking. This one was submitted by Hippic. I've never heard of this before and it sounds creepy as hell. It's one of those things that your buddy might tell you he read somewhere when you first start playing the game. And each time the wind charges at you on this map, you get scared and hide. I love it. I doubt it's true. I really hope it is. I feel like I would have figured it out by now. I would have noticed it by now with the amount of times I've played on Ormond. Uh, it's cool to do a myth that isn't just based on perks too. So let's take a look. Lightweight reduces the length of diversion scratch marks. This one was submitted by FTD with the wrong perk tile and corrected by Jeffrey Vernier. Vernier, Vernier. Teamwork, guys. Nice one. Diversion allows you to throw a pebble, causing scratch marks at the place where it lands. Lightweight, meanwhile, causes the scratch marks to fade three seconds sooner than they would normally. But will lightweight also reduce the duration of scratch marks created by diversion? And finally, for the people, counts towards Renewal. This one was submitted by Carter Corcoran. Renewal activates after healing survivors for the equivalent of one health state. For the people, allows you to trade a health state with another survivor by pressing E when healing them if you yourself are healthy. But will a heal done in this way cause Renewal to activate? Let's take a look. Scratch marks from Diversion show up when in the radius of Boone Shadow Step. This one was submitted by Gabriel Marvin. Diversion allows you to throw a pebble that creates an explosion and scratch marks for the killer at the place where it lands. But what happens when in the range of Boone Shadow Step, which hides your scratch marks? Will the scratch marks from the pebble still show or will they be hidden? And how about if we throw the pebble from outside the radius to inside the radius? Stakeout tokens are consumed with Lament Configuration skill checks. This one was submitted by Mr. Marcus. When solving Pinhead's Lament Configuration, you're tasked with skill checks. But will stake out, which gains a token every 15 seconds during the killer's terror radius without being chased, and on a good skill check, consume a token to switch that good into a great, have its tokens consumed when doing this. You can fully recover from dying with Soul Guard when Haunted Grounds is activated. This one was submitted by Pelin Morales. Soul Guard allows you to pick yourself up off the ground when cursed. Hex Haunted Grounds creates two Hex Totems, which, when either is cleansed, cause you to become exposed. But will Soul Guard work when Haunted Grounds is activated? Let's take a look. Play with your food increases the speed of spirit phase walking. This one was submitted by a Twitter user who I, I don't know the name of. Well, let me just check my DMs. This one was submitted by Lewis joined the party or, or otherwise known as no milk for me. So one of those. Play with your food gains a token each time you chase the obsession and let them escape. Each token applies a 5% haste effect. But does this haste effect increase the speed of phase walking?
Adrenaline can be blocked by the pig's place trap animation. This one was submitted by Helzus. How's it going, man? Adrenaline heals you for one health state and allows you to sprint for five seconds when the exit gates are powered. Normally, if you're on the ground when this happens, you'll go from dying to injured. But what would happen if adrenaline procs at the same moment that the pig starts to place a reverse bear trap on your head? Will the effect of adrenaline be blocked? You can activate inner strength while downed by having Victor hold the locker's door. This one was submitted by White Tower. The deep wound status effect requires you to mend before the timer runs out or you are placed into the dying state. Normally, if you're dying while inside of a locker, you'll burst out of that locker and fall to the floor. But if Victor is holding onto the door, then will this still happen? You can blind the killer during a Mori. This one was submitted by Shadow the Hedgehog. Not Hedgehog, Hedgehog. Some killer's Mori animations are in first person. First person? First person. It's an F, not a TH. First person. So what happens when you try and blind the killer mid Mori? How about for third person animation like Nemesis? Is, 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 is. Hex Blood Favor blocks pallets when a teammate dies on hook or disconnects. This one was submitted by Liam. I know that I said no more Blood Favor myths, but this one is something we didn't actually cover. Hex Blood Favor blocks all pallets within 32 meters of a survivor who goes down a health state. We established in a previous episode that it works with Maury's, but does it work with normal death via the hook? How about if a character disconnects? Shadowborn makes the red stain bigger. This one was submitted by Mojo Jinx. Love the vid. Keep macking these. Shadowborn is a perk that increases your field of view by 15 degrees. Although, as we previously covered, the red stain doesn't cover the killer's entire field of view, it might still have a basis in the killer's field of view. As a result, Shadowborn would increase it. Let's take a look. You can heal while broken with the syringe. This one was submitted by Dark Wolf. Love the vids. The broken status effect prevents you from being able to heal. But what happens if you use the anti-hemorrhagic syringe, which after 16 seconds automatically heals you, take a protection hit while Metal of Man is active, which prevents you from going down due to the application of endurance, and the killer has forced a penance, which will apply broken when you take said protection hit. If the syringe continues to apply after you've been hit, then you should fully heal. But it may be that the broken status effect completely stops you from going up a health state, or it might be that the broken status effect just prevents you from starting the healing action. Let's find out. Hex third seal blocks the totem or a reveal of Hex plaything. This one was submitted by I'm Humid Yapper 740. P.S. Love the singing, and I really want to hear Ocelot with a hat. When I'm an ocelot with a hat, I don't need friends, I don't need anyone else, I am happy. 
Hex third, seal applies blindness to the last four survivors hit by a basic or special attack. Blindness blocks all aura reading abilities, except for those of killer powers that are crucial to the killer's gameplay, such as the plague's pools of devotion or the pig's jigsaw traps. Hex plaything creates a hex totem when you're hooked. For the first 90 seconds, only you can cleanse this totem. And while this totem is active, the oblivious status effect is applied, which blocks your ability to hear the terror radius. The aura of the totem is revealed to you when within 16 meters. But will hex third seal prevent you from being being able to see this aura making plaything considerably more viable. Solidarity and Resurgence work together. This one was submitted by Revenge the Goat. Love your content. Actually, a lot of people have asked for this one, but uh, Revenge the Goat just so happens that you win today's gimmick. You win the Valentine's Day special. I hope you're happy with yourself. I've been asked this one a lot. I think it's obvious. So Revenge the Goat, not only do you get to be in the video, but I'm also going to insult you by saying I think it's obvious. But uh, let's, let's take a look anyway. Resurgence gives you 50% healing progress when being unhooked. Solidarity heals you 0.5 charges for each charge that you heal another survivor. So if an injured survivor unhooks you and then you heal them, will you also fully heal? Boil over's 33% wiggle progress bonus still counts with iron grasp. This one was submitted by Loves being a Trekkie. <laughs> Boil over applies a 33% wiggle progression bonus when the killer falls from a great height while carrying you. Iron grasp, however, increases wiggle duration by 12%. So the question is whether or not iron grasp's increased duration will reduce the 33% down to 29.04%. That is 12% less progress. All right, Valentine's Day is over. I've, I've run out. I told you I was going to run out, and I ran out at this point in the script. You can see that last one was, oh, nine days ago. Never mind. You can see the one before that was five months ago. So the thing to do if you want to guarantee that your comment gets in one of these videos is just read my mind of what the gimmick's going to be the next time, and then chuck that in there. This is the first time I've ever done something like this, but like put that in the comment, and then maybe you'll get lucky if you would consider being associated with me to be luck. I would say that's pretty bad luck, but uh, there you go. Mad Grit will prevent Boil Over's Wiggle Progress bonus. This one was submitted by Weird. Mad Grit causes the Wiggle Bar's progression for four seconds after hitting a survivor. But what happens if you hit a survivor and then fall from a great height while the carried survivor is using Boil Over? Will the 33% Wiggle Progression bonus be blocked? Play with your food increases the Legion's fatigued movement state. This one was submitted by Tataru. Who makes great videos, by the way. Go check out Tataru. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, but I'm probably not. Play with your food gains a token each time you chase your obsession and let them escape. Each token applies a 5% haste effect up to a maximum of 15%. After the Legion uses their power, they drop to a fatigued state for a few seconds where they move at 2.07 meters per second. But will this movement speed be impacted by play with your food?
you can down multiple survivors with the artist's crows. This is one that we discovered accidentally while working on a previous video. You can, by the way. Here's us lining up a shot to try and get all four. All right. It just got me. Oh, yeah. We probably have to be like clumped up. Well, you got two people that time. You know, you know what we can try? What? We Since you lose collision when falling, we can all vault out of that window. Bang round as well. Understandable. Okay. Bang is in position. Has everyone got the birds? Yep. Alright, try it. Let's try it. This is so dumb. This is so dumb. What is this? Oh, three of us? Oh. Right. So, the PTB came out last week, and I wanted to make a myths video looking at it. Then I got a bit ill and my voice was breaking, so I figured I'd leave it a few days. Then Caden Jackson scored this cracker of a goal 80 seconds into yesterday's match, and I cheered a tad too loud. So yeah, my voice went from bad to worse to totally gone, which is why... I'm going to be doing the voiceover for today. Pebsy, the type of guy to injure himself watching football. Good job, buddy. Juan was submitted by Botch Me. Parental Guidance works with Decisive Strike. Parental Guidance is one of the new survivor perks. After stunning the killer by any means, your scratch mark, pools of blood, and grunts of penis are pressed for the next 10 seconds. I don't really need to explain Decisive Strike. Everyone already knows what it does. Hall of Brine works with Jolt. This one was submitted by Twix. I am for one outright begging for you to show. Pe Pepsi is begging for it. Show him. He's begging for it. Show the gamer it. Call of Brine activates when damaging a generator for 60 seconds. That generator regresses at 200% the normal regression rate, and its aura is revealed to you. When a survivor completes a good skill check on a generator affected by Call of Brine, you receive a loud noise notification. Jolt, formerly known as Surge, uh, let's be honest, uh, everyone still calls it Surge, causes all generators within 32 meters of you to instantly explode, start regressing, and lose the 8% progression whenever you put a survivor into the dying state, but will Jolt cause Call of Brine to activate on the affected generators? Merciless Storm can be countered with instructions. This one was submitted by Nathan. Merciless Storm forces constant skill checks. If you use a toolbox with instructions right before Merciless Storm activates, can you prevent the skill checks from Merciless Storm? Show us Pebble, I wanna see it. It doesn't work, let's go. Uh. Merciless Storm works with Huntress Lullaby. This one was submitted by that one Ew. guy. Huntress Lullaby gains a token every time you hook a survivor between one and four tokens. It basically just gives you super, super speedy skill checks that are a bit of an arsehole to hit, and at five tokens, it just gets rid of the skill check sound. While de-manifesting, you can vault the same window as the Onryo. This one was submitted by his friend's friend. While de-manifested, the Onryo has no collision, so does this mean that both the killer and the survivor can vault the window at the same time? Let's have a look. Let's both vault it. Now. Oh no. Oh, you Sorry. gain collision while vaulting. Interesting. Thank Maybe you. if you vault first and I... Oh, hang on. I've not... Oh, you've got collision now. Hold on. You're manifest. Oh, I... No, I was... Hang on. Once I've gained collision, I don't think I get rid of it. Here we go, right. Oh yeah. So. Oh shit, that's so weird. So you, you gain collision when you do when you when you fall. No. no. So you gain collision. Ha. Huh. 
while demanifested vaulting a window will still proc bamboozle. This is the second part of the question. Bamboozle causes any window you vault to be blocked by the entity for 16 seconds. But will this effect still trigger when the Onryo is in demanifestation? It does. Blast Mine will cause manifestation. This one was submitted by a schmuck. Blast Mine allows you to trap a generator, causing it to explode when it's kicked, blinding and stunning the killer. This makes the Wraith uncloak. So it stands to reason that the same thing would happen with the new killer's manifestation. Let's find out. Oh, is Blast Mine active? Yeah. Uh, it didn't de it didn't manifest me. Nice. Franklin's demise works with the VHS tape and subsequently causes condemnation. This one was submitted by TG769. I don't know if you do myths for PTV, but I have two. What? He's got two? You can have two questions if you want, TG. The new killer introduces a new limited item, the VHS tape. When picking up the VHS tape, you gain one condemnation. Condemnation? Condensation? I don't know. Sorry, boys. But if it's knocked out of your hand via Franklin's Demise, if it can be knocked out of your hands by Franklin's Demise, will you still gain an additional condemnation? Con condiment stack. We're going to go with that. Now we're driving a tape. Uh, Franklin's me. Hit me. Oh, Franklin doesn't even work with it. So can I hold an item with this? Let's find out. <laughs> yeah. It's just gonna be all of them put together. Holy shit, you can carry this item and another one. That's really interesting. Now why must I hit you with Franklin's? I'll go down. Spirit Tusk is viewable via Kindred, even if it's out of the range of the hook. This one was submitted by Daniel Lewis. Here's something interesting that may also be a bug. Daniel was suggesting that Kindred, which allows all survivors to see the aura of the killer when they're within 12 meters of a hook survivor who has Kindred, allows the survivors to see the spirit's husk if the spirit phases within this 12 meter range while her husk is outside of this range. Let's find out, shall we? Move away, move away, move away, move away, move away. I still see your radius. Okay, you are no longer in the radius. Yep. So... Phase walk in. Phase walk towards her and let's see what happens. Yeah, it works. I'm right next to her. Yeah, it works. You can totally mute Billy's chainsaw. This one was suggested by Pet Silencio 115 Oh, and a month prior by Edna Mode. The Hillbillies add-on Apex Muffler mutes the sound of the chainsaw for all survivors outside of your terror radius. Dark Devotion causes your obsession to emit a terror radius when hit with a basic attack and mutes your terror radius for 30 seconds. So will Apex Muffler work in conjunction with Dark Devotion? Let's find out. Don't He's... need to hit Frankie. Oh yeah, you do, yeah. <laughs> right, now use your chainsaw. Come over here to me. Dark Devotion is still up. Interesting. So I'm pretty sure that worked because I started because I was moving. It counted as a chase, so the chase music started. Uh, wait, what? Wait, how is this a myth? Does an add-on and a perk both work? The answer is yes, they do both work. Who recommended this one? I'm gonna put his name up on the screen right now. Shame on you. Who pick? What? Who accepted this one as a myth to be done in the video? Oh, it's dumb, isn't it? That really sense. Here, 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 here. Does dark devotion work? <laughs> Yes, the perk and the add-on both work. <laughs> well, hang on, yeah, because I can walk past you now, not facing you, so you ain't going to chase. And you can't hear my terror radius, can you? No, nor when you're using the chainsaw, which is also muted. And you can't hear the chainsaw. <laughs> it's just the two things work. You can hold the game hostage as twins. This one was submitted by the good guy. The twins, as I'm sure you're aware, are able to split off into being two different entities. One of these, Victor, can be kicked by survivors. However, as they both have collision boxes, can you place Charlotte in front of one exit gate, switch to Victor, and then move around enough in front of the other that survivors can't pull down the lever? That's right, I said lever, not lever. What are you going to do about it, Americans, huh? Mispronounce more words? Aluminum. All right, let's see. To begin with, let's see if this if this works. We have oh. to put Charlotte on the one by the. No, I can already. Snow. I can already tell you it doesn't work. Um, when you're within the radius of the uh, exit gate, you can't unbind Victor. Can you not? No, there's like a, a whole thing around it. I can't unbind him. 
If I do this, can I block off the collision? Can you use this gate? No. No, but you. But I can't unbind well, hang him Hang on, Victor's so. faster though, isn't he? Yeah. Oh. So you can make it to the other gate before me. Oh yeah, right. Yeah, let's try. Try and get out. Try and get out without kicking him. You look so stupid <laughs> running in front of me backwards. <laughs> without kicking him. Try and get out. Try and get out. Even if you have to kick him or like open the exit gates. <laughs> I can't. No, I'm getting the prompt. That's what's the most frustrating thing. Is I get an open exit gate prompt. Uh, you can take him off. Instant wiggle off with flip flop. This one was submitted by Scoop Cannon. Flip flop converts 50% of your recovery progression into wiggle progression. But what happens if you reach 60% wiggle progression, get dropped, and then recover to 90%? Will you immediately get off, or will the effect be ignored? The latter meaning that it sets a minimum starting value rather than an addition to the existing value. All right, drop me. I'm below. Right, so if this ends up taking us all the way up to 90%, then we know it works for that purpose. See, I don't know what, what percentage is it meant to go up by. When you're on skill checks, when you get picked up, you immediately start wiggling, no matter what. I gain some progress, but I don't understand how... Right, one second, I'm just going to put a hmm under this. <sighs> Iridescent button increases the progress of Spirit Fury. This one was submitted by Ben Maltas. The Legion's add-on Iridescent button causes any pallet you vault to instantly break. The perk Spirit Fury activates after breaking two pallets. But will pallets broken by the Legion cause Spirit Fury to gain progress towards activation? Let's find out. Yeah, it works! Huntress Lullaby can be revealed before it's gained a token. This one was submitted by Mr. Inferno. Huntress Lullaby's primary effects take place after gaining a token by hooking survivors. However, it also has a pre-token effect, that of increasing the regression penalty of failed skill checks by 6%. It would stand to reason, therefore, that the cursed effect will be applied the moment you fail a skill check, even before the perk has gained any tokens. Let's take a look. Stakeout effects wiggle skill check. This one is submitted by Steel Hund at Steel Hund. Nice. Stakeout gains a token every 15 seconds during the killer's terror radius without getting chased. When completing a good skill check, a token is consumed and that good is converted into a great. But will this affect the recently added wiggle skill checks? Stakeout tokens are not consumed. Uh. David's the wristwatch does this cool thing. This one was submitted by Miguel Put. So, on David's impromptu beach photo shoot cosmetic, he has a watch on his right hand which says 1134, spelling hell when upside down. But the suggestion is that when the endgame collapse activates, his watch switches off, perhaps signifying that him and the other survivors are now in hell. I know this one probably isn't true, but like that time I tested the wind on Ormond potentially representing the killer's car in movement direction, it's one of those things that I hope is true because it'd be cool. I'm looking straight at the watch. It clearly says hell. 11.34. Close that. Close that hatch. It, no, it doesn't. It also doesn't change <laughs> with this watch. <laughs> uh, I'm so glad I bought this one as well. Yeah, I'm so glad I bought this. Yeah, this one was like eight pounds worth of shit of cells as well. Uh. Amanda's letter and videotape calls only two survivors to start with bear traps. This one was submitted by Eric Dabija. Dabija. I, uh, sorry, I pray. The pig add on Amanda's letter reduces the number of available reverse bear traps by two in exchange for allowing you to see the aura of any survivor within 16 meters while crouching. Her other add on videotape, however, causes all survivors to start the trial with reverse bear traps on. The question is this Does taking Amanda's letter and videotape cause only two survivors to start the trial trapped? Let's take a look. Oh, hell yeah, I'm loading in. Really? I'm just loading in as well. Two of them, slow. two of them. Only two of them have the thing. 
Survivors can make themselves scream against the plague. This one was submitted by Kimberly Terasaki. When the plague runs out of fountains due to survivors cleansing, she gains corrupt purge. Her add-on incensed ointment causes all survivors within her tower radius to scream when she ingests corrupt purge. But will its activation via running out of fountains also cause incensed ointment to cause survivors to scream? Can you like face away from me for a second so I lose chase? I'm trying to. You're, I mean, you're in my tower radius, yeah? Yep. Wait for it. Nope, no screaming. Ah! Broken and healthy with second wind and adrenaline. This one was submitted by Frudel, I guess. Adrenaline causes you to regain a health state when the exit gates are powered. Second wind, which activates after healing another survivor for one health state, applies broken when being unhooked. After 20 seconds, you are automatically healed. But if adrenaline heals you while on the hook, will second wind still be applied when being unhooked, causing you to be both broken and healthy? Right, so adrenaline should activate now. And then when I get unhooked... Oh, no! Oh, what? yes! Oh, yes! Oh. I'm... I'm Yes, I'm broken. Are you healed? Wait, and wait, healed. wait, wait, wait. Let me hit you. Let me hit you. Stay by the hook. Stay by the hook. Quick, quick, quick. It's about to proc. <gasps> Whoa! Oh. Build to Last continues to progress when pulled out of a locker. This one was submitted by Mogri Games. Apparently, Build to Last, which returns item charges when jumping into a locker, is bugged and continues to return those charges after being pulled out. This was corroborated by two further commenters, Lumi and Zach Mash. And given that it's now been three weeks since this was submitted, and I don't remember any sign of it in the mid-chapter patch notes, I figured it'd be a good thing to take a little look at. Pull me out. Yeah. Interesting. Have you been in there long enough? It's still going round. It's still going round. And it recovered my charges. <laughs> you can see the spirit while phasing with windows of opportunity. This one was submitted by Ole Christian Dubvik. Right, right away. Can't pronounce the name. Typical. Windows of opportunity allows you to see the auras of any breakable wall, pallet, or window within 32 meters. When the spirit phases, she goes invisible, but there are some strange bugs surrounding this mechanic. Only last episode, for example, we discovered that her husk becomes visible when phasing into the range of kindred. So, Ole's suggestion is that you can see her mid-phase if she passes between you and a windows of opportunity pallet. Let's find out. Built to Last continues ticking over after a locker grab and a DS hit. This one was submitted by Not Octi. Also in the last episode, we discovered that Built to Last continues to work after being pulled out of a locker, returning depleted item charges to you while on the killer's shoulders. But what happens if you hit the killer with DS while this is happening? Will the item charges return to you while you're running away? Corrective action works with Merciless Storm. This one was submitted by Aki. AC. Aki. I, I see your name all the time, man, because I get notifications whenever you comment. I've got no idea how to pronounce your name. I'm so sorry. Corrective action converts your teammates' failed skill checks into good skill checks. Merciless Storm causes continuous skill checks on a generator once it reaches 90%. If any of these skill checks are missed, then the generator is blocked for 20 seconds. I thought I was going to burp. <laughs> but will failed Merciless Storm skill check still cause the generator to get blocked if your teammate has corrective action? Order gives the killer a notification when a flashbang is crafted. This one was submitted by 1000 Ping King. I know how you feel, buddy. I know how you feel. Order triggers a loud noise notification any time the survivor unlocks a chest or picks up an item. But does it give a notification when a flashbang is crafted? The thinking here being that the trigger is on the survivor going from having no item to having an item rather than the pickup action itself.
And finally, Call of Brian causes oppression's gens to regress faster. This one was submitted by They Shiki. Call of Brian causes a damage generator to regress at 200% speed and have its aura revealed to you. Oppression, meanwhile, causes three other random generators to begin regressing when you damage a generator. So the question is this. Do these two perks have synergy causing those three random generators to also have the effects of Call of Brian applied? I think that the giveaway here will be whether or not their auras are lit up. Let's take a look. Stakeout activates Gearhead. This one was submitted by Guy Allen. Stakeout is a survivor perk that gains a token every 15 seconds that you're standing in the killer's terror radius without being chased. When completing a good skill check, a token is consumed and that skill check is considered a great skill check. Gearhead is a killer perk that activates after a survivor loses a health state. When a survivor succeeds a great skill check while repairing, their aura is revealed to you for 10 seconds. So will a stakeout good to great skill check cause Gearhead to proc? Let's find out. Pain Resonance overrides Call of Brian's regression penalty. This one was submitted by that one Buster Blader main. Scourge Hook Pain Resonance causes the generator with the most progress to explode, instantly losing 15% of its progression and starting to regress when hooking a survivor on one of the four Scourge Hooks. Call of Brian causes a generator to regress at 200% speed and have its aura revealed to you for 60 seconds when kicking it. But will a rapidly regressing generator afflicted with Call of Brian have its 200% speed progress overwritten by Pain Resonance? Let's take a look. Pinhead's teleport can be interrupted with a stun. This one was submitted by Pug Whisperer. When Pinhead teleports, he has to charge up a short animation. But what would happen if you stunned him while this animation is playing? Will the teleport be interrupted? Clairvoyance can be used to block Tombstone Myers. This one was submitted by Feddy. Feddy? Freddy Fazbear. Clairvoyance is a survivor perk that activates after you cleanse a token. Totem. Not a token. That doesn't make any sense. When empty handed and pressing the ability button, you can see the auras of all exit gate switches, generators, hooks, chests, and the hatch within 64 meters for 10 seconds. There's a rumor going around that this perk is currently bugged, however, and can be used to prevent Myers Tombstone add ons, which would normally allow him to instantly moor you. Let's take a look. For the people grants the killer a remember me stack, this one was submitted by Nick P. Remember me gains a stack each time the obsession loses a health state. In the past, we've looked at similar perks and found that they don't gain tokens when the health state decrease is self-inflicted via for the people, a perk that allows you to trade a health state with another survivor when healthy. But is that the case for remember me? Let's find out. Death Slinger's ringing audio cue will not play when you're out of his terror radius. This one was submitted by Cav. When the Death Slinger aims at a survivor, that survivor hears a ringing sound warning them of an impending shot. But will this sound effect play when out of the Death Slinger's terror radius and within the range of the harpoon? It's important to note here the sound effect will only play when within the range of the gun, which is 18 meters. The Death Slinger's terror radius is 32 meters. Jeez, they really took the jump scares out of his design, didn't they? We can reduce this terror radius by four meters with his add-on Marshall's badge, and then by a further eight meters with Gold Creek Whiskey. That's still 20 meters, however, so we need to reduce it further, which we can do by using the perk Monitor and Abuse, which reduces it by 16 meters when outside of a chase. It also increases it by eight meters, so it's only really a reduction of eight meters. But yeah, that's now 12 meters, so less than the range of the harpoon. Let's investigate. The, uh, the answer here is going to be revealed by whether or not we can shoot the person without them hearing the ringing audio cue. It's faster to hold W rather than S when reading a survivor room with Deathslinger. This one was submitted by Bellin Frankie. Another Deathslinger one. At least this is a little easy to look at. 
is it faster holding W or S when reeling a survivor with the Death Slinger? Let's find out. You'll still be healed when cleansing with a deep wound. This one was submitted by Cutting Actions Buddies. Usually you're healed when cleansing against the plague, but what will happen if you've got an active deep wound and cleanse before the timer runs out? Will the deep wound persist despite you being healthy? Let's take a look. DS is deactivated when using inner strength to heal. This one was submitted by Jonas Reha. Decisive Strike deactivates when healing yourself or other survivors, but will it deactivate when jumping in a locker to use inner strength to heal? If not, you'll be able to have DS up while healthy. Let's take a look. Horda activates when a videotape is collected from a TV. This one was submitted by Frogjamp. Horda is a killer perk that triggers a loud noise notification whenever a survivor picks up any item. But will it activate when collecting a videotape from a TV? Let's find out. This is one of those ones where some of you were like, well, obviously it does, duh, but there you go. So, uh, shut your face. Blast Mind activates parental guidance. This one was submitted, but not reading that name. Uh, Mr. Mr. Gurr, thank you for the submission. This one has been submitted as a fun fact, so presumably it works. Blast Mind allows you to set a trap on a generator that stuns the killer when it kicked. Parental guidance suppresses your scratch marks, pools of blood, and grunts of pain for seven seconds when stunning the killer. It's meant to be designed around pallet stuns and the like, but does it work remotely with Blast Mine? Let's find out. And finally, you can pallet stun a phasing spirit. Uh, this one was submitted by I Am Bored. I don't actually know what happens when you do this uh, to a husk or when she's actually mid phase. So let's test both scenarios and find out what happens. This solution works with Spirit Fury. This one was submitted by Cody Bauer and Scoop Cannon. This solution is one of the Dredge's new killer perks, which three seconds after injuring a survivor activates for 20 seconds. Anytime a survivor vaults over a pallet while inside your terror radius, that pallet will become broken once the vault ends and the perk deactivates. Spirit Fury, meanwhile, gains a token every time you break a pallet. When you've broken two pallets and are stunned by a pallet, that pallet is broken. The question is this, does Spirit Fury gain stacks when a pallet is broken via dissolution? Let's find out. Residual Manifest works with Ace in the Hole. This one was submitted by the Jamie Dodger. Residual Manifest is one of the new survivor perks. After blinding the killer, the killer suffers from the blindness status effect for 30 seconds, which means that they won't be able to use any aura reading abilities. Residual Manifest also grants the ability to rummage through an open chest once per trial. This rummage will guarantee a basic flashlight. Ace in the Hole, meanwhile, guarantees a very rare add-on and has a 50% chance for a second uncommon rarity add-on to be applied when retrieving an item from a chest. But will Ace in the hole cause residual manifests rummaged flashlight to have these add-ons.
You grab a survivor mid-hide if you teleport to a locker they're currently climbing into. This one was submitted by Raphael. This one's gonna be a little bit difficult to test, but we'll try our best. When the dredge teleports to a locker that a survivor is already hiding in, they are grabbed. But what would happen if a survivor is mid-climb as you teleport into a locker? Will you still grab that survivor? Begin hiding. Yeah, you get sucked in. You can lock another survivor in a locker. This one was submitted by TJ. Um, what happens if you try and lock a door that another survivor is hiding in? Okay, jump in the locker, jump in the locker. Can you lock that door? You can't lock the door. There's no option to lock the door. <laughs> There is no range on teleporting back to the remnant. This one was submitted by Alessandro Scala. Probably not pronounced that right. Sorry, man. This is a fairly easy one. As the dredge, when you activate your teleport ability, you leave behind a remnant that you can teleport back to. But what's the range on this? Could you, for example, teleport between exit gates across the entire map even? Let's find out. This might take a minute. Nice. Yeah, sweet. You can lock a locker while the dredge is inside it. This one was submitted by Jara. Another easy one. Uh, don't really need to describe this, do I? What happens when you lock a locker that the dredge is already inside? If you try and lock a locker that the dredge is inside of, you get pulled out. I didn't know that. You can deception or locker while the dredge is inside it. This one was submitted by Danyanetta. And yet again, another easy one. Deception allows you to feign entering a locker. The doors swing open and shut. A noise notification is given to the killer and your scratch marks are suppressed. But what happens when you deception or locker that the dredge is currently inside of? Will the deception still work? And finally, you can immediately rekindle a totem broken with Shattered Hope by using Pentamento. I had this from a few people, but Z-Burn, I believe, was the first. I've saved the best for last. There's a new general killer perk. That means it's available for everyone called Shattered Hope or Boon Destroyer, as it's named in the code. That's, that's true, by the way. When you snuff a totem, you actually destroy it instead. Okay, cool. But with the artist, we got Hex Pentamento, which allows you to perform a ritual on a cleansed totem to resurrect it as a rekindled totem. So... Does a boon destroyed by a shattered hope count as a cleanse, allowing you to immediately resurrect the totem? Let's find out. And there you have it. 204 Dead by Daylight myths busted. If you have any suggestions for this series, please leave them in the comments with the word myth somewhere in the video. A big thank you to my patrons, Kurt Gardner, Joelbrook182, Think Sometimes, AVR Razor, and Channel Manager, Chipstar878. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.